Hi, Laura Leader with Law Office Solution here. This demo is to show the difference between a simple pleading template and our full-blown legal macro package software, QuickDocs. The pleading template can be used on a regular PC, for Microsoft Word on a regular PC, or on Word for a Mac, so Word 2011, Word 2016. Whereas the software at this point can only be used on Word for a PC. We're hoping in a few months to have a Mac version out, but that's a little ways off yet. So in the meantime, a lot of Mac attorneys, Apple attorneys are contacting me saying, hey, I want to use Word for Mac and I want to be able to format my pleading properly. Can you help? Yes, we can. So this is a simple pleading template and I set this one up where I have some fields that can be filled in or you can just click and type over them. If you're just a solo practitioner, you probably want to just fill your information in here and save it instead of doing it every time. But just to give you an idea of what's possible with these fields, you can I can set up fields where if you type something in one place, it will appear elsewhere when you have repeating text. You can see John Smith appears down there. Okay, so let's just pretend I filled the rest of this out. And I'm gonna put some text in here to show you what is the value of having a pleading template if there's no software involved. No computer programming. Well, first off, you can see that the text actually aligns with the pleading paper quite nicely, if I do say so myself and it goes all the way down to line 28 which some people have trouble with um, we have in the footer here where i could have put the title up here and it would have just appeared in the footer and i typed that all in lowercase accidentally so that's how it appeared but it would appear the way i'd actually typed it okay within the pleading Typically, there are only so many things that you need to do. You have your regular text, which we have here. You have quotes that you need to do. Maybe you have declarations. And then you have an outline, which can be really frustrating. So we designed this with what are called styles to make all that easy for you. And a style, if you're not familiar, a style is like a collection of formatting. It just tells a paragraph, essentially, what to look like. What is its purpose in life? I already have text in here, but I could use the styles as I'm typing along. And you can see, uh, if I click in this paragraph here, go up to the on the home ribbon to the styles gallery, let's say this was going to be a quote. Block text is a style for a quote, so I just click it and boom, my paragraph is formatted as a quote. And then there are a couple other random styles. Well, they're not random really, but uh, body text is for the body of the document. Body text continued is when you are continuing a paragraph after a quote and you don't want that first line indent. And then I'm gonna grab a few of these at once. A lot of times you have declarations where it's not an outline, but you just want simple one, two, three, four, five type numbers. But how annoying can it be to try to get them to look the way you want in Microsoft Word? Very annoying. So we have a style set up that's already formatted just right for that. And any of the styles that you need in addition to those can be set up and put into the template for you. Those are the main ones, though, that get used in a pleading outside of the outline numbering. Now, I'm going to show you quickly here how the outline numbering works. Let me return this to body text. Oh, and by the way, I should mention there can be shortcut keys, like Alt-B for body text. Uh, different shortcut keys can be assigned to the style so that you don't have to reach for the mouse and find it in here to apply it. All right, so a heading, we have here heading one. Let me just type, well, I'll put heading one on now, and then I'll type introduction. And you can see that formatted it. Now this is set up by design so that if I was typing along and didn't already have the text in here, as soon as I press enter, I return to body text style. So you can apply these headings as you go. Here's heading two. I'm copy pasting. 
or if you've already got the text in the document for whatever reason, you can apply them to existing text. I'll do heading two again. Oh, that was heading three, heading two. So you can see with the styles, if you're not already familiar, you just click the style you want and it switches the formatting to that. You don't have to get rid of the old formatting. Um, okay. I paused the video and I went through and just put a few more headings on some different paragraphs just to show you how you can make changes to it. Now, because we're using styles here, let's say that you wanted level two of your outline to always be underlined. You can go to the heading two style, modify that, tell it to be underlined, and then throughout your entire document now, level two of your outline is underlined. And you can turn that on and off and uh, do all kinds of things to these paragraphs. I should say to the styles that are formatting the paragraphs. Now beyond that, because we use these heading styles, if you need a table of contents, all you need to do is insert it. You don't need to go through marking, etc., because the computer knows, oh, level one is heading, heading one is level one of the table of contents, heading two is level two. If we had used heading three, level three, etc. So to put a table of contents in, I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to put a page break here. And I'll set this up uh, for a table of contents. So let's say I'll use this normal style here, which really doesn't have much formatting. Oops, let me bold that. And I'm just going to press enter a couple times here to push that signature block down. Oh, I wasn't thinking. The table of contents should be after the signature. Hello. Let's say I want the table of contents between the caption and the body of my document. So I'm going to go here. Oops. Let me put my heading style back on there because I messed that up reapply. Thank you. And then this, I will make the normal style. I would have pressed a keyboard shortcut normally, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. By the way, I don't recall if I mentioned, but you can have keyboard shortcuts like Alt B for body text, Control Alt 1 for level 1, so that you don't have to reach for the mouse. All right, let's say I want my table of contents between the caption and the body. So I'm going to put a page break in, Control Enter on the keyboard. And I'll turn show hide on so you can see what's going on here. So there's a page break. Here's going to be our table of contents and then we'll have another page break and then we'll have the body of the document. And I want my table of contents here. I paused the video and typed this part in, uh, but here's how I would put the table of contents in. Now normally we would have programming that would just boom, do all this for you. But without it, you can simply go to the reference ribbon for Word and tell it you want a table of contents and tell it I'll do a custom table of contents. You can see that down there. And I'll just go with the defaults, but I want, I do not want hyperlinks instead of page numbers. And there's my table of contents. Because we use those heading styles to format our headings, all we need to do is click a button to get the table of contents. Now, if you need a table of authorities, you're still going to have to mark your citations for the table of authorities, but then inserting it, once that's done, inserting it is essentially the same as doing our table of contents was. Okay, so that was just a simple pleading template. No magic in that there's no programming in it. But what if you don't have Word for Mac and you have Word for PC and you'd like even more assistance when working your pleadings? Well, here's the difference. Here's our Quick Docs software, and I will use this to just run a brand new pleading. I'm going to do a California State pleading. And this is programming. So let me move this. It's getting a little cut off from my video. Um, but basically what you have is a dialog box. And so you can go through here and fill in everything. I'll pause the video for you. 
All right, I filled this page out. There are more pages here that you can fill out. So here's the title. It's gonna make it all caps for me because I have that checked. I can copy that into the footer so I have the same thing in the footer. But if I want to abbreviate it, I can. Uh, if we have multiple attorneys, they can be pulled out of a database and I'm just gonna double click some of these names. It'll put them in. And then we have options for pulling co-counsel out of Outlook, deciding the typeface if you want something other than the normal, and a few things about the layout. Um, but I'm happy really with just what I put here for the most part, say okay. And it sets it up for me. Now once I'm in it, the formatting styles are the same that I showed you on the pleading template. So this template now has all those styles you can use the same way. But what it also has is a whole pleading ribbon. And this does all kinds of things. Um, I can add cross actions with this where it will put them in the caption for me. Heaven forbid I have to do that. That can actually get kind of tricky sometimes. Uh, affirmative defense numbering, objections, cause of actions. Let me, I'll put some of these in. Let's say I want five of these puts them in. So declarations, verifications, all kinds of things for discovery, whether it's int like uh, boilerplate text intros you use for different types of discovery um, or discovery numbering itself. Let me come down here. Let's put some in. Just some regular discovery numbering, things like this. I'll do special interrogatories with responses and I want seven of these sets. If I don't want to start at one, if, you know, I'm continuing this from previous, I can tell it what number we're starting at and put that in. And there they are and then I can type the text in between them. Um, I paused and deleted that. A separate statement of facts, they can be a bit of a pain also to set up. So we have something set up where you can just type, press enter for a new paragraph. This is my evidence. Notice that's not numbered. But now as I press tab on the keyboard, when I add a row, I get the numbering again. Type, but that's beside the point. Um, and then I showed you a little bit of the discovery. We also have, if you're here in California, the California response to California form ROGs, family law employment. And I'm not showing it here, but we do have um, construction defect form ROGs too. And with these, you can fill, uh, fill these in. and choose the ones you do and don't want. And then it's going to put all that in for you. And where we have these highlighted fields, you can just click and start typing. So all kinds of things that you can do once you're inside a pleading. So that is an example of what programming will do for you that simply having a well-formatted pleading won't do. But I think that it's still very valuable to just have a well-formatted pleading because you're not fighting with the outline numbering, you're not fighting to make your quotes, you're not fighting to get the text to line up properly, etc. Now, sticking with the whole programming theme, you'll recall in our boilerplate text pleading, we had the heading one, heading two, heading three styles for our outline numbering. Well, in when you're able to have the programming, we have, let me get rid of this. I'll just get rid of all that. Quick numbers. Now this is software, but it goes above and beyond what simply having an outline set up in your pleading will do in that you can have all the outlines you want created in advance and you can pick from them for the document you're doing. So I'll use pleading one here, say okay. Now it's setting that up and now as I work in the document, 
if I press Alt-1 on the keyboard or click 1 up here, it applies that formatting to the text. And I can use that as I'm going along. Typing along, I can use it. Here, press Enter. I'm back to body text. Oops. Press Enter. I want another heading. Alt-2 on the keyboard or click the 2. And just keep going. And then with this software, when I want a table of contents, I just click where I want it, and I can have it set that up for me. Same with the table of authorities, although you do still have to mark the table of authorities. There is some software out there that will do the whole table of authorities for you, uh, but this is not it. If you want to know the name, just email me and I can uh, look it up for you. I know a lot of firms that do a lot of table of authorities like having that. I don't have it. I didn't mark anything for table of authorities, so it's just going to be blank. But you can see there's a table of contents, and this will even change the page numbering to the lowercase Roman numerals if you want. Although um, I know in San Diego, they've actually requested we stop doing that for PDF filings, keep the page numbering going one, two, three, four, five. Um, but there are a lot of times when you want that. And this is really nice for transactional documents as well. So that's kind of a brief example of the difference between just a simple template that's well formatted and actual software. Hope that helps.